this is the Euro style version of a reef filter. The idea being that there's no bio balls in there at all. So there's really no biological filtration that really occurs. Uh, those that are proponents of this type system believe that because of that lesser biological capability that it's not going to produce as much waste, i.e. as much nutrients, which in turn cause algae problems. Uh, from my experience, regardless of what type of water, what type of filter, you're going to end up with an algae problem sooner or later. Uh, that's not a reason to necessarily go with bio balls, and this type of a filter is appropriate for the reef system. But it doesn't really offer you uh, any biological. Uh, we're counting on the live rock in the tank to do that. Uh, the biggest issue with these style filters is how to baffle or muffle uh, the water coming into the filter so that it doesn't create an abundance of noise uh, or an abundance of small little champagne air bubbles. Uh, we have in here at the moment uh, what we'll call a sock, a micron sock, uh, which is going to capture all those fine little particles. It'll also certainly stop all those uh, small little air bubbles uh, from coming from the overflow. But the problem with these fine filter medias is eventually they become restricted. And the finer the filter media, the faster it's going to become restricted. And so I find that these socks, typically, or these micron socks, typically are only good for what's called polishing the water. Once you remove those fine particles, you would then tend to remove that filter media out of the system. And so what we're probably going to end up doing is incorporating just a pipe that's going to extend the flexible drain line a little further down into the system so that at some point we could just simply remove that micron saw, allow this to extend the water to the water level so it minimizes all that crashing noise uh, and additionally all of the um, bubbles that might come from it. I might even be able to persuade the homeowner uh, or the happy hobbyist to um, put live rock in on that side which will help baffle uh, the splashing that occurs over there and would give him to a certain degree some, I'm not going to say biological filtration, but uh, that rock might uh, grow sponges on it, uh, things such as that, which would in a long uh, roundabout way help out filtering the aquarium because filter feeders, which is what a sponge is, will filter the water. Not as good, but will filter things from the water. So now that the system is running, the first thing that we want to do is check what our okay. maximum water level line will be. We can accomplish that at this time by turning the power off and allowing the water level in the sump to rise until the siphon that draws the water back to the sump breaks itself or the water officially stops back siphoning. Regardless of the style of filter, these filter systems that do sit below the aquarium in the cabinet have one significant disadvantage, and that is every hobbyist learns it the hard way, that if the power goes off and it's not plumbed properly, it will back siphon into the filter and quite often out onto the floor. Now the reason for the back siphon is that the power goes off and the return lines, which are below the surface of the water, act as a drain going backwards. They siphon, or in this case, back siphon water out of the tank. That water drains down into the filter below. That filter below has to be able to hold all of that water or it will overflow and spill out onto the floor. There is one possibility of stopping this and that is using what is called a check valve. Unfortunately, I have found out the hard way many times that check valves are not fail safe. And so I try to build a system without a check valve at all. This way, if the back siphon occurs and the calculations on my part are correct, then there will not be any water that will spill out of the system. So this is the first thing we're going to do. We're going to turn the power off, allow all the water to drain down to the bottom of those two return lines. Once they suck air and break the siphon, Technically, there's no more water that's going to drain from the tank. If my filter below is holding all of that water, and it appears as though we are within two inches of that point, then I'm safe at this point knowing the maximum amount of water that will drain back to my filter is this much here. So with that said, 
I can go ahead and turn the system back on. Once that water level equalizes again, I can put a mark there and know that that's the maximum filled level in the filter below. So we'll now turn the system back on and where that water level levels off at becomes our maximum running water level. And we're going to take and mark it as such. Maximum running water level. Never fill the filter system beyond this point. If you do, you risk overflowing the tank if the power goes out. Now in addition, we need to make a minimum running water level mark anything below this point may cause the water pump to suck air blowing air bubbles into the aquarium so with the operating water levels determined the system running well we're going to go ahead and clean the inside of the tank clean the outside of the tank slip the cabinet doors back on and we're going to lift the canopy system up on top of the tank Lighting for this reef tank should be interesting because we have to deal with this half lid on top of the aquarium. Additionally, we have an interesting calcium reactor and a downdraft style protein skimmer that we're going to be incorporating into the system, as well as an aquarium computer system. So this is the basic setup for a coral reef type tank. Whether you use a Euro style filter or an algae based filter or a mud based filter, the plumbing arrangement is very similar. Tune back in for future episodes of the lighting that we add to this tank, the setting up of the protein skimmer and the calcium reactor, as well as another episode on the addition of the live rock and live sand into the system. Until then. Keep moving forward.